Hey guys, check it out. I've got a Pulse 21 furnace right here. This is a furnace that was really popular for quite a few years because of how efficient it is. And it's just a really interesting furnace. I decided that I was going to take this one and take it all apart and see uh, the components just kind of for fun. And it's made out of some really heavy plates of metal in there. So I'm going to take it apart and we'll see what sort of useful things or not useful but maybe interesting things we can get out of the thing. We're going to go ahead and open it up and I can show you what I'm talking about. If you look at it over here, um, basically the explosions go through this uh, primary heat exchanger. This is the actual chamber right here where the explosions happen and it's interesting, we're always laughing when we look at these furnaces because the first one's a flame sensor but the one underneath it yeah, that's that right there is a legitimate spark plug. Just like an ordinary auto spark plug for a car. <laughs> Which is hilarious to see a furnace that has a spark plug in it. So anyway, um, we'll pop it apart. But yeah, like I was saying, primary heat exchanger and then way down in there you can see the secondary heat exchanger. Again, just made out of really heavy metal. This is This is basically a giant muffler and then it goes through down there. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get it pulled apart and see what interesting things it has in it. These bolts on the outside are 7 sixteenths. Just go ahead and get them all loosened up and we'll take that plate off. Really interesting, they have the uh, whole schematic put on the back of this plate, or the front of this plate, which is really nice. But we are about to pull it off. I have all the screws loose. So here we go. The great reveal. And there's that, that heavy plate. That is a heavy plate too. All right, and here we are looking straight into the heart of the beast. So wow, look at this. We just have a simple little C-frame motor. These motors are really interesting. They're just so simple and they work so well. But uh, the reason this doesn't really need a super powerful uh, combustion blower is because uh, it only runs to pre-purge the system. So it runs for a couple minutes and then it shuts off. It doesn't actually run the whole time like it would in a furnace. So now let's pop out a piece of this insulation. I think that this insulation, in addition to blocking heat, also blocks all of the noise because that right there is our fancy flap disc valve. So this has just a flap on the inside and uh, opens and closes letting in air and fuel mixtures. So that's really cool. We'll, we'll end up seeing where the gas valve actually lets the gas into there. But this is just like the air intake box. So yep, right up here, hard to see, but there's there's a hole going up into this pre-purge combustion blower. Huh. That is super cool. The exhaust is way down here. So it comes out of the secondary heat exchanger, goes out on the side, and there's normally a big um, piece of PVC with a drip leg on it. And then that exhaust goes out of the house there. So I got a bunch of screws pulled out of here and opened this up. This is where all of the controls are. We have a 24 volt transformer. We've got a relay set here and uh, a terminal block in addition to another control board. And there's also wires going from here up to the other uh, burner control, thermostat, and gas valve. So I'm gonna take out all the wiring stuff and I've gotten the blower wheel pulled out which is just attached on either side by a couple of screws. There's that little little piece and I left the wires as long as they could be on there. So we'll just put that aside. We'll see what else we can get from the furnace. I think I might just leave the wiring and stuff on here intact as much as I can and then just unplug things off of their spots on the boards. So I got more of the wiring harness pulled out from up around there and I got the insulation pulled out of the back of here so that we can see what is holding it on. As you can see I've already taken out that bolt or that nut, that nut, and that nut um, right up in those corners 
And I just have this one here. But I think I'm going to have to actually take off this valve thing before I can proceed. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how that goes on there. It kind of looks like this whole thing can thread off. But I'm not sure how easy that's going to be. So we'll have to mess around with it because this this steel plate in the back, that hole obviously isn't going to pull over that. So I might might open it up. Well, actually, let's just open it up right now on camera because it's kind of interesting. Well, let's start with these perimeter screws. One more. Okay, so here is the valve and it just consists of two plates, so to speak. <laughs> Hi, Lena. And I think that this one here is a got a diaphragm in between it. Oh yeah, you can see that kind of fiber, fibrous membrane. That is the diaphragm that flops in and out. And these other two metal plates, I suppose, just hold it in place. So that's that's what allows air into the combustion chamber. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. So this seems to be made out of some kind of thick rubber. Notice it kind of bends a little when I push on it. And I think I do see threads. So I was actually quite surprised at how easily this comes apart. Well, at least how it's easily it starts to come apart. This piece right here, this rubber piece, just threads on. There are threads on this rather beat up now piece right here. Um, so you just thread that off and you can set that aside. Um, and then up in here, there's a ceramic piece, but that got like cooked on there big time. So I could not get that to turn. So I ended up just breaking it down enough that I think I'll be able to get the iron box off. These pieces of ceramic, they don't appear to be made out of any glass, but listen to how they sound. Like they sound just like ceramic or like glass but they're light so if anyone knows what these are made out of feel free to let me know because I really am stumped I'm gonna keep them set aside just in case there's something that is toxic and shouldn't be handled much but I guess we'll pull that last nut off and we'll see what the metal box looks like and if it's free I think I have to disconnect this one bolt up here too. So after some difficulty and actually I, I twisted one of these bolts right off um, but I finally got it removed there's a lot of this this foam piece is very tightly kissed up against there so it's kind of difficult to pull it out but ugh, finally there is the metal box and let me tell you that really is one hefty metal box Like, they no joke built this heavy enough to stand a pretty substantial explosion, apparently. But wow. That's, that's so heavy duty to be inside of any furnace. Just like a two compartment box. This buffer protects the gas valve from getting damaged when that's going boom, boom, boom from all the explosions that'll be happening on the inside. But... <laughs> I got this twisted off. Um, I wanted to take it apart at the Union, but that Union's very tight. So I think we can just thread this off. And there it is. That's kind of an interesting piece. Half inch gas line uh, metal cylinder. Looks like we can finally get this pulled out of here properly. It's the whole electrical the nervous system, essentially, of the furnace. Uh, we're starting to get furnace parts all over the place. Rather empty, I must say. Um, but we'll pull out some more screws. I want to get that, that primary heat exchanger out so we can have a look at that. There's really not much left in this furnace. I wonder what's behind this cover. Oh, and I have been taking the screws. Well, when I'm videoing, I only have one hand. But I've been taking all of these screws and putting them down in this little tin here. Oh, I bet I know what this is for. 
I bet this is the access port for the spark plug. Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> Although you, yeah, you can get at them from here, so that must be what that is designed for. Little access port. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm going to keep tearing it apart, just pulling out all these screws. I'll let you know if and when something exciting happens. So I thought this was just ordinary gas line fittings, but it turns out this shiny piece right here is not ordinary. Um, I imagine this is the orifice that you would change if you changed it to a different kind of gas. Those are all orifices. That go through into there. Maybe that's maybe that's the metering device, but definitely got something going on with this too. Finally, pop this back plate up. It's catching on some stuff, but ugh. wow, it's dusty. Whoa, ho, ho. that looks so cool. This piece of insulation. What a beast of a machine. Check this thing out. So cool. We can see it all. It's all laid bare to us. So, the gas inlet is here. Let's the fuel into the combustion chamber. Which, okay, well, let's just start from the beginning. So, this, the furnace turns on. There's a call for heat. The gas valve is off. And everything else is off. First thing it's going to do is run that little uh, motor right over there that we took out. It's going to run that and pre-purge the system so that there's fresh air inside of the combustion chamber. Then it's going to turn on the gas. Well, first it'll probably bring on the spark. So the spark will be in, and then it'll bring on the gas valve. The gas will let fuel in, and then the first whoomf, explosion of flame will happen. That diaphragm will close for a second, which will force all of that explosion through this and up and down into the main body of the of the primary heat exchanger. Wow, it's so cool. And then it'll just keep doing that, boom, 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 at an extremely fast rate that to us just sounds like kind of a hum, sort of like that compressor on that freezer over there running. And then after it goes through the whole primary, like, giant muffler thing right here it comes down and is collected in this tube which I think is made of stainless steel I think that's stainless steel stuff this this is not rusty and you would expect it to be rusty because there's lots of corrosive water coming out of it but that runs through then the secondary heat exchanger and then the condensate and exhaust ends up coming out here and then would have gone into PVC and outside. This one right here is the actual spark plug and this one up here I believe is the uh, flame sensor. So both of those crucial components. That is so cool. What a cool furnace. If they still made these I think I would put one in my house which is that cool. But now the furnaces are a lot cheaper than what this one would have run <laughs> back in the day. But uh, I'm going to take out those bolts and we'll pull this out and then we'll line up all of the treasures we got from the furnace. Alright, so after taking apart that entire furnace, here is all of the interesting components. As you can see, there's nothing much in here, just a couple pieces of uh, tin and insulation. But over here, we have all of the other Nice things that we got. We have this little C-frame motor, squirrel cage C-frame motor, which just pushes a small amount of air. We have the main blower motor, which those are really useful for all sorts of things. And then we have this really nice, I don't know what it is, quarter, quarter inch plate from the front of that furnace. Um, some various controls and wires, transformer relays, uh, I, that stuff is probably not super useful, but it's there. Uh, blocks of insulation from the inside of this cabinet. This piece I'm excited about. I need to figure out what I can do with it, but it is a heavy piece of metal. Like, 
yeah, just a really nice big welded box. So probably can find something kind of cool to do with that. Oh yeah, and this thermostat. These thermostats always intrigued me. So that might be interesting to try to use for something too. Pressure switch. Um, we have a gas valve and this metal cylinder that has half inch threads tapped into it on either end. So there's probably something interesting we could do with that. Um, a couple more half inch fittings. Various uh, seals that were between the uh, heat exchangers and the other side of the furnace. And then we have the actual, the actual beast, the real, the real interesting piece.